Hey there Dev Squad Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be setting up the blueprint for our floor tiles that are going to be spawned in endlessly. As of right now, when you press play, you are just running straight forwards on the pre-made level. What I want you guys to be able to do is to be able to run forwards on a tile which is going to have three lanes. And it's going to look a little bit like this. And having said that, you guys need to make sure you download the latest version of the Endless Assets because you're going to need these textures to set up the material for your floor tile. So what we're going to do is, once you've downloaded these, once again the link for that is in the description below, I need you guys to go and create a new folder within your main content folder within your content browser, and we're just going to give this the name Runner Files. Open this up, and then within here, we are going to create another new folder called Tiles. Now this runner files folder which we've just created is going to contain all of the assets for our game. This tiles folder is going to contain the assets specific to our tile. So the textures for it, the materials for it, and all of that good stuff. So within your endless assets folder, select your floor tile underscore diff, underscore em, and underscore normal. These three textures are going to be used for our tile. Just click, drag and drop them into our tiles folder to import these into the engine. What we've got to do now then, because as you know, you cannot use a texture on a object. You've got to use a material instead. We are going to create a material and this material is going to have a diffuse on it, which is going to be your base color an emissive, so it has a bit of a glow on there as well, and then, an, and then a normal map as well to give it a little bit of depth. So right click on your diffuse and press create material. And then we're just going to give this the name floor tile underscore mat, open it up and we can start working with this. So hold down T on your keyboard to create a texture sample and then do the same thing and create a second one. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, instead you can just type, right click and type in texture sample and do it that way. But that's up to you. These texture samples are gonna be for the textures that we've just imported. So the diffuse, the emissive and the normal. Because we right clicked on the diffuse map and created the material from there, it's already given us a texture sample with that diffuse selected and hooked up to the base color. We've just created two new texture samples and with these we just need to define the texture for the normal and the emissive within here. So with the te uh, second texture sample selected, go to your texture in the details panel in the bottom left and just set this to floor tile underscore em. And then with this, hook it up to your emissive color. And what you'll notice you've now done is given your floor tile a bit of a glow on these little lane lines that we've got here. With the third texture sample, set this to floor tile underscore normal and hook this up to the normal on your main material selector up here. And what you'll find now you have is just a little bit of fake depth. Press apply and we are good to go. We have now got our material set up for our floor tile. So what we've got to do now then is actually create the blueprint which is going to contain the look and the physical representation of our tile. Within our runner tiles folder, uh, our runner files folder, we are going to create a new folder called blueprints. And within here, we are just going to create a blueprint actor for that tile. So right click, create a new blueprint class with the type actor, and we're just going to give this the name master tile. This master tile blueprint is essentially going to contain the physical representation of our master tile. And when I say master, we are going to have some sort of duplicates of this. This one is going to have the main functionality and act as a template, essentially. So open this up, 
And we've got to add a couple of things in here. First and foremost, we've got to add a mesh in. A static mesh is going to be something they can walk on. So add a component. And for the type of component, we're going to use a cube. And with this cube, in the details panel on the right hand side, we're going to change the material to our floor tile underscore mat that we've created here already. And notice now we've got our tile material and it's got the three lanes that I wanted to give it. Now for the size, because we don't want it to be a cube, we're going to set the scale on the X to 10, on the Y to 10, and then the X, sorry, the Z is going to be 0 0.1. So if you zoom out now, you should have a nice, look, a nice looking little tile that looks a bit like this. And now we need to add one last thing to this, and that is going to be our attach point. Our attach point is going to be where we're going to be telling the engine to add to the next tile. Now for us, we are going to be having things moving forwards on the X axis. So our attach point is going to be over here. But what I do need to do is make sure our tile, our floor tiles are facing the right way. So I'm just going to rotate this tile positive 90 degrees and we can now add that attach point. So go to add component and we are going to add a arrow component. Now this arrow component is not going to be something the player is going to be able to see, but it is something we're going to be able to use to take the location of and use it to spawn the next tile. So get this arrow and what you want to do is you just want to make sure it is over here, over at the end. So get the default position, which is over here and then move it this way just so it's on the edge and it should be at about negative 50 on the Y and then there shouldn't be a gap and the rest should be on zero. So the location should be zero, minus 50 and zero. And what I'm also gonna do is rotate this arrow so it's facing forwards just like this and then hit compile. Once we've done this, that is pretty much the main element set up for our floor tile. And if we were to bring this into our game, you'd be able to see exactly what this looks like. And you can see we've got some nice little proportions here. We've got three lanes, just like any other endless runner, and it is good to go. Now we have still got a lot more that we need to do in terms of adding the functionality to get the engine to spawn these endlessly, destroy them after you've used them, but all of that is going to be for the next video. But for now guys, once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.